Banana. Okay, rice tables. We are looking at rice tables for the purpose of determining equilibrium concentrations. We have to know equilibrium concentrations in order to solve for K. And vice versa, in order to solve for equilibrium concentrations, we have to know K. So if either of those items or any of those items are missing, we have to use um, a rice table. When you're doing your rice tables, what's different, instead of being given equilibrium concentrations, you're given concentrations of the reactants right when the reaction starts. When the reaction starts, it's not at equilibrium yet. So reactants will be thrown in, and then a shift will have to happen. We'll have to make products, and it'll go back and forth until it reaches equilibrium. Sometimes they throw in products. Because it's reversible, you can throw in products, and it shifts to the reactants. Point being, you don't have equilibrium conditions at the start of the problem. So in this problem right here, we're just going to jump in. It says, if 1.0 liter container holds 1.0 moles of H2 and 1.57 moles of CO at a temperature of 162, don't let the temperature freak you out. It's just saying that everything we do is only good at that temperature. Um, the following reaction occurs. After equilibrium is established, it shows 0.2 moles of meth methanol in the container. Calculate the concentration of CO at equilibrium, of H2 at equilibrium, and the KC. So because they are asking us for equilibrium concentrations and the K, we know we need to use a rice table to get those. So we're going to start with all the parts of a rice table. And I'm going to go ahead and just pull this down a little bit. And we'll start with R. What does R stand for? Reaction. We're going to take the reaction and we're going to write it in the R line. Now, just like with the equilibrium constant, we only take into account gases and aqueous solutions. If you don't have it, you'll put an X down it. But we're not really going to hit that until acids and bases. So don't worry too much about that. Um, I stands for initial concentration or pressure. So the only things you can place in a rice table are molarity or pressures at whatever, at whatever unit they use, atmospheres, millimeters of mercury, tor, it doesn't matter. So looking at the information they gave us, did they give us some initial concentrations? Did they? They gave us some initial moles, right? But can I figure out concentration? But since it's what? I know what you're going to say, and you're right. Go ahead. We have one liter, right? So the moles over one liter is the concentration. So in this case, these are actually moles per liter. So we can go ahead whoops, and put it in the rice table. So we initially have 1.06 moles of this and 1.57 moles of CO. That's all we're putting in from the start. Did we put in, does it say we put in at the beginning any methanol? No. So we have zero of methanol. All right, C. C stands for change. It's what direction we have to shift and how much actually shifts to get to equilibrium. We, if there's a zero in the initial line, we always shift toward the zero. We have to. This reaction. Don't we agree it has to proceed right in order to get this thing started? Okay. So because we see that, we're going to do minus, minus, and plus. Now, how much we lose or gain is going to be an unknown. We're going to call it x. But it's based on the stoichiometry. For every two of these, we lose one of those. And for every two of these and one of these, we make one of those. So we use those coefficients in front of the x. So we lose 2x, we lose x, and we gain x. The last part of the rice table is the E line. What does that stand for? Hello? E, equilibrium. This will be our concentrations at equilibrium. So we're going to put, we're just going to add those lines up. 1.06 minus 2x, 1.57 minus x, and the equilibrium of that guy is just x. So 
they usually give you a, a, a clue somewhere. At this point, they'll either give you the K, or they'll give you some information about one of those things. There's going to be something else that's going to help you solve for the X. So if you look, they told you that after equilibrium is established, analysis shows 0 0.200 moles of methanol is in the container. So that's the equilibrium moles per liter, because we're in a one liter container. 0 0.200 moles per liter is what the E line for methanol should say. What is that telling us? That's telling us X is equal to 0 0.200. So if we know X is equal to 0 0.200, how does that help me? There's a lot of crunching going on from many people. It's like a buffet and I feel left out. Um, what, do I, what do I do? How can I find the other equilibrium concentrations? Plug in X. So if I have 1.06 minus 0.4, what is that? 0.66. So that's my concentration of this guy. 1.57 minus 0.2, I can actually do that in my head. 1.37. And so that is my, those are my equilibrium concentrations. Um, you cannot stop at this point. You have to, you can't, you can't make the reader, like as a grader, assume and do work and go to the table and figure out which concentration was which based on what you want. You have to have a final answer. So at this point, we're not done, but we do have these two pieces of information. So we're going to write that the equilibrium concentration of CO is equal to what? 1.37 moles per liter. We do know that the equilibrium concentration of H2 is equal to 0 0.660 moles per liter. So that I know so far. I still need to find my Kc. So any ideas how I'm going to do that? The equilibrium expression. So I'm going to go ahead and write it unsubstituted first. K is equal to the products over the reactants raised to the coefficients in the balanced equation. So methanol times H2 squared times CO to the first. All of them are gases, as you saw in the problem part up there. So we're allowed to use those in the expression. So now we can plug in our values, our concentrations. And so we have 0.2 divided by 0.66, wait, did I do it right? Yes, squared times 1.37 to the first. So what did you all get for K? Louder? 0.335. Can I get a second on that? All right. So my KC then equals to 0 0.335. And remember, we don't need units on the K. This is how I want you to format your final answers. I want you to have your work separate, but have a clear place that I could find these. I do not. I'm going to treat you like a grader. I'm, if I'm going to have to be digging for a very long period of time, I don't think all points are going to get awarded. I think things might be overlooked. All right? I need you to separate your answer. Because what's going to happen if a grader goes straight to that box and sees the right answer? I'm less inclined to look for areas of mistake because I know you did something right. So I'll look at these, and then there's going to be requirements, like you have to show your expression. I'd go here, there's the expression, there's this, there's the X, good, I'm done. And I can move on. But if I'm searching for stuff, I might find things that I don't like. And you don't want to make a grade or spend any more time than they have to. Because if they find things that aren't correct or contradictory at all, points can be removed. So make it quick and easy, OK? All right, let's go to the next one. <clears throat> We're doing five problems today. No big deal. A vessel initially has a partial pressure equal to, oh, this is, by the way, it's back. It's one of the first problems in the packet. We skipped it yesterday. Do you see it? It's number two in front. A vessel initially has a partial pressure of NO equal to 0.526 atmospheres and a partial pressure of BR2 equal to 0.329 atmospheres. At equilibrium, the partial pressure of BR2 is 0 0.203. Calculate Kp. Since I got my reaction kind of separated, I'm just going to do the rice table 
off of this. All right, I know I need a rice table because I've got to find the K. And in order to find the K, I've got to find equilibrium pressures. And I only have one of the equilibrium pressures. And I've got some initials. So again, I can use pressure in the table instead of molarity. And my NO is 0.526. My BR2 is 0.329. And I do not have any mention of NOBR initially. Which way do we have to shift to get to equilibrium? Toward the zero, to the right. So minus 2x minus x plus 2x. So my final equilibrium line will have 0.526 minus x, 0.329. Oops, sorry, thank you for catching that. 0.329 minus x, and this is 2x. All right, what other piece of information do they give us that's going to help us out? Yeah, they gave us the partial pressure of BR2. So this down here is 0.203. That's our equilibrium constant um, pressure. So we're going to utilize that to find what? X. So on that equilibrium line for BR2, I have 0.203 is equal to 0.329 minus x. So when I solve for x, what do I get? 0.126. Now I can take that x and substitute it into the other stuff in the E-line. All right, so half of you do this half of the room, do the left, that half of the room, do the right, NO, NOBR. So holler it out when you get one of them. 0.252, so we multiplied x by 2 there. And then 0.526 minus 2x is 0.274. So there are all my pressures. What I want to do in this problem is make sure we understand how to write a pressure uh, expression, an equilibrium, a KP expression. So KP then is equal to, we do not use brackets on pressure. We use parentheses with P's. So we're going to do parentheses, partial pressure. NOBR is this kind of like a subscript squared. Got it? Divided by the partial pressure of NO squared times the partial pressure of BR2 to the first. I would hate for you to lose a point for crazy things, like forgetting the P and only using brackets. All right, so now we can substitute in. KP then is equal to NOBR is 0.252 squared divided by NO is 0.274 squared. And then BR2 is 0.203. All right, so what is our KP then? To give me three six six. Four point one. Can I get a second? Four point one seven is my KP. Do they seem easier than last year? No, are you serious? Because you thought they were easy last year, see that's not, that's that doesn't count. You thought you thought this was hard right now. What about it was hard? What don't you understand? Let's figure that out. What don't you understand? Equilibrium itself. What an initial concentration is. Oh, it's the get, it's the bet thing. I thought you're. I was seriously trying to trying to like ignite a discussion. I know I did. Yeah, y'all are not gonna get donuts. It's not happening. If you're honest, I'll give you donuts. Is it easier than last year? Okay. I'll bring 
donuts at some part. <laughs> All right, let's move on. Those of you who took pre-AP last year, I don't know if you remember when you did this group quiz. I mean, you all barely remember being in school last year. I'm asking probably an impossible question. But you had a group quiz on equilibrium, and this was actually, minus the KCKP part of it, this was actually one of a, bon a bonus question we gave you. I don't think you all remember, but... Well, no. So we're going to work it now. It's no longer bonus. It's now expected. Um, the following reaction occurs at 298. If two moles of HI are placed into a one liter container and permitted to react at equilibrium, it is found that 20% of the HI has decomposed. Calculate KC and then KP. All right, so we need to calculate KC, so we need equilibrium concentrations, but we don't have any, so that means we've got to use a rice table. So I'm going to do my rice table on the side this time. And I'm going to write 2HI. Whoops, I thought my finger was an eraser. I guess no longer. 2HI, I2, and these are all gases. Two moles are placed into a one liter container. That means it's two molar initially for HI. Do I have any I2 or H2? Nope. So right now, before we deal with this 20% thing, I always like to finish out the table. So how much are we going to lose? 2x plus x plus x. So we're going to get 2 minus 2x. We're going to get x, and we're going to get x. So again, we need that extra hint, something that they're going to give us that's going to provide some information. It says 20% of the HI has decomposed. What does, it, what does decomposed mean? What did 20% do? Was used up. 20% of that HI shifted to the right. What on this table represents how much shifted to the right? X minus 2X. This represents how much that HI lost. That HI lost 20%. So 20% of the original 2 is like saying what? Point 2 times 2. So what is 20% of 2? 0.4. Are you all with me? 0.4 shifted. So what is 0.4 equal to? 2x. Yes. Can anyone think of another way of doing this? If 20% shifted, 80% left. It was remaining. So you could take 80% of 0.2 and set it equal to what was left. Either way, you're going to get the same answer. So if we do this like we have it, 2x is equal to 0.4. x then ends up equaling 0.2. So there's our x. We can utilize that now to find these concentrations. This is a 0.2. This is a 0.2. This is 2 minus 0.4, which is 1.6. So those are my KC concentrations. All right. K is equal to, we're going to do KC right now, I2 times H2 divided by HI squared. So we get 0.2 times 0.2 divided by 1.6 squared. What do we get for KC? Everything is 3 sig figs, so... Okay, see right? Cool. That's KC. Now, remember yesterday we talked a little about, about the transition from KC to KP? And I said, check on something before you actually do the equation. Yeah, check on the change of moles. Because if you remember, politically correct, 
there was this little guy up here that could cause issues. And if it's going to show up, I think it's going to show up in a, in a situation just like this. Our delta N is what? We have how many moles of gas? One, two, minus how many moles of reactant? Two. So two minus two is zero. When the delta N is zero, what is true? Kc equals Kp. So when you catch that and you see that, you, don't, you just need to say Kc is equal to Kp. So Kp is also equal to 0 0.0156 because you're supposed to solve for Kp specifically. And as far as the reason, you can say there is no change in moles of gas. You need to be careful what they ask for. They asked you to calculate Kc and Kp, so they want to see an actual Kp is equal to. If you just write Kc is equal to Kp, you aren't necessarily going to get the points because you're not calculating Kp. Um, I know it seems picky, but sometimes they ask questions like, define Kc in terms of Kp, then that Kc equals Kp would be acceptable. But when they ask you for a separate calculation, just go ahead and separate it. All right, not too bad. All right, now we're going to do our last two problems with quad form, so you're definitely going to need it. You, everyone has to have a way to have quad, to, have, to solve for a quadratic, okay? Not, not optional. You've got to figure it out. You guys are resourceful. If you have calculators, I can get it in there. If you have like your Casio, you can probably go on their website and figure out a, it has a solver? Okay, perfect. So, equilibrium constant Kc for the reaction PCl5 going to PCl3 plus Cl2 is 33.3. .3. So they actually gave us the K this time. If 0.4 moles are placed in a 2 liter container, oh thanks, 2 liters, not 1 liter, going to make life more difficult. Calculate the equilibrium concentration of all species. Okay, we can do this. If we have to find equilibrium concentration of all species, we need a rice table. So here we go. Our R is PCL5. That gives you PCL3 plus CL2. They told us an original moles of 0.4. So what's the molarity? 0.2 because it's moles per liter and we're in a 2 liter container. They didn't give us any of this. So we don't have a whole heck of a lot to work with. So we're going to minus x, we're going to plus x, we're going to plus x, 0 0.200 minus x, x. And all the examples today were shifting to the right. I need you to know that's not always the case. Sometimes you have to shift to the left. Um, all right. So we have to solve for those equilibrium concentrations. What are we going to do? They're not giving us any other hint. They did give us K, though. Yep, we're going to plug in our variables on that E line into the expression and set it equal to the K, 33.3. So the expression unsubstituted, K is equal to PCL3 times CL2 divided by PCL5. And so I'm going to plug in 33.3 is equal to x times x, which is really x squared, right, divided by 0.2 minus x. So your job is going to be solving for x. This is why we need the quadratic formula. So um, I'm going to cross multiply 0 0.2 times 33.3 is 6.66 minus 33.3x, and that's equal to x squared. What do I need to do to make this quadratic formula friendly? What? Right, so we're setting what it equal to what? Zero. I need to set one side of the equation equal to zero. I like my x squareds to be positive, so I'm just going to zero is equal to and bring everything over to the left. x squared plus 33.3x minus 6.66. 6. 
when you use quad form, some of the solvers are given weird numbers, like they're rounding too much, giving an actual 0.2, and it's not 0.2. Yes, it is 0.199. So x is equal. Can you tell me the other root? All right, so those are two answers you've got. One answer, the way it works is if one is negative, you're going to automatically throw out the negative one. If both of them are positive, one of them will lead to a negative concentration when you plug it into the E-line, so that would be the one you throw out. So here, there's only one answer that makes any sense, so our X then is equal to 0.199. So this is 0.199, then the concentration of PCL3, the concentration of Cl2 is 0.199, and what would be then the concentration of this guy? 0 0.00100. I have three sig figs. So, am I going to leave my answer like this? Nope. We're going to write our little thing out. You can do a little shortcut. You could write PCL3 is equal to Cl2, which is equal to 0.199 moles per liter. And then your PCL5 is equal to 0 0.00100 moles per liter. And there is your answer. So it's really not that bad with the quadratic if you have the solver. I would hate to have to do negative B plus or minus square root of, I don't even remember it anymore, 4AC over 2A. B squared minus 4AC over 2A. All right, last problem. Same system, same K. All that's different here are our initial concentrations. In this one, they're giving us an initial concentration of 0.4, and they're giving us an initial concentration of Cl2 this time. So not much changes. But let's talk about that change. So our initial concentration of PCL5 is what? Our initial concentration of PCL3? Zero. And our initial concentration of Cl2? 0.5. So we still have to shift toward the zero. We still got to make PCL3. So we're going to go minus x plus x and plus x, and so we get 0.2 minus x, x, and 0.5 plus x. So now our math just becomes a little bit different. Let me ask you this, though. Before we had nothing in the product slot, nothing, and we shifted, and we, we ended up making these guys at a 0.199 molarity. With something here, do you think more will shift or less will shift? Just gut instinct, less. OK, that was what I would think. So let's go ahead and solve and find out what those concentrations are. Um, so we need to set up our K. K is equal to PCL3 times CL2 divided by PCL5. And so we get 33.3 is equal to x times 0.5 plus x divided by 0.2 minus x. So to cross multiply, we get the same thing we did before on the left, 6.66 minus 33.3x. That's equal to, now I'm just going to go ahead and distribute this x, 0.5x plus x squared. Okay, so isolating some stuff here, 0 then is equal to x squared plus 33.8x minus 6.66. What are my two roots? Uh-huh. 30. All right, so obviously, this is the correct root. So you all know how to use the quad form. When I, when I give it to you, um, 
you enter, it's under the programs, it's not an app, so it's in programs once you get it in your calculator. You hit the button and it asks, you start the program and it says A, question mark, so in this case you type in 1, B, 33.8, C, negative 6.66. And then you hit enter and it gives you both roots. Okay. All right, so if X is that, we know that our concentrations are PCL5, concentration at equilibrium is going to be, what's 0.2 minus 0 0.00400? Yes, no? So our PCL3 then is equal to X itself, which is 0.196. And then our CL2 is equal to 0.5 plus that, so 0.696. And those are my concentrations. All right. So there we have our introduction to rice tables. I'm going to stop the video, and you guys will, we can start spreading the quad form around with our, I've got a bunch of cords.